Hello, let's talk about a particular type of scatter plot called a lag plot. The simplest way to understand it is just to look at an example. So I'm going to take some data from uh, the Oz production data set. So here we have some code which takes the Oz production data set and it just filters out all of the data since 1992. So we just compute the year corresponding to that quarter and make sure that's greater than or equal to 1992. So you can see that the data has seven columns. There's six different uh, commodities that are produced um, and a value for each quarter. So I'm interested here in the beer production for Australia. Okay, so the function we're talking about in this section is gg lag, gg underscore lag. So if I take my data set and I pipe it into the gg lag function and I tell it that I'm interested in the beer column, the beer variable, uh, and for now I'm going to set the g on to be equal to point because it's a little easier to understand the function um, using this form first. And you'll see it produces this set of scatter plots which are labeled lag one to lag nine. And these show the beer data plotted against lags of the beer data. That is, for each graph, it's showing yt plotted against yt minus k for different values of k. So let me just do an example. So this lag one graph up here, if I look at these yellow points in this section, um, so that's plotting all of the data corresponding to quarter four on the y-axis plotted against quarter three of the same year on the x-axis. So I know they're quarter four because of the legend that says down here that yellow corresponds to quarter four. On the other hand, if I take, for example, these points here in the purple color, these correspond to quarter one um, on the y-axis. So the previous quarter will be quarter four of the previous year on the x-axis. So it enables us to look at how um, different values of the time series relate to lagged values in the same series. So the first graph shows yt against yt minus one against the previous observation. The second graph headed lag two shows uh, yt versus yt minus two, so two periods ago. So again, if we just look at these yellow points, so this, this little section up here is all of the quarter four values plotted against two periods earlier, two quarters earlier, so against quarter two of the same year. Um, whereas these ones down here, the blue ones, these are quarter two plotted against two quarters earlier, which is quarter four of the previous year, and so on. So you get an idea what the... Uh, consecutive values or values a certain distance apart, how they relate to each other. Now, if you look at this set of graphs, you'll see clearly that there's some quite strong negative relationships here um, and quite strong positive relationships here at lag four and again at lag eight. Now, that's not surprising because when you're looking at lag four, you're plotting quarter four in one year against quarter four of the previous year and quarter one of one year plotted against quarter one of the previous year. So in a, in a series which has um, strong seasonality, like the beer data, the peaks which occur in quarter four will be plotted against peaks occurring in quarter four of the previous year. Um, whereas when you plot them two lags apart, as we've got up in this graph, you're plotting the peaks against the troughs. So you get the peaks here in quarter four, um, the yellow section, they're plotted against low values, they're plotted against quarter two values. Okay, so we get a graph showing the relationship between points k periods apart. Now, if I don't use geom equals point, and I just take out that and use the default geom, I get this graph, which is exactly the same, except that instead of dots, I have lines. So there's the one with points, there's the one with lines. So these are connected in time order. In this particular example, the time ordering is not very instructive. Um, you don't sort of see any particular patterns going on within each group, but uh, sometimes you will see some useful information when you when you do the time ordering, and that's why it's the default. Okay, so that's uh, an introduction to lag plots.
and how to produce them using R.